Hi. Hi. We're the Flippin' Weekend. A mother-daughter duo upcycling furniture every Saturday and Sunday. This weekend, we transformed this into this. This flip has been one of our favorite transformations to date. Just look at how beautiful this piece is. The wood and white two-tone combination really complements the clean lines and minimalist MCM design. Keep watching because we're going to show you step by step how we did it. We found this piece on MaxSold.com, an online auction platform where we always find great deals through estate sales, downsizers, or even liquidations. We picked up this piece at a storage locker and loaded it into the vehicle. Hey, we're excited. I mean, just look at mom's smile. We couldn't wait to start this project. Once we got it home, we could tell it was in pretty rough shape. The hardware was completely falling off. It looked like someone had also tried to sand the top. And there were scuff marks everywhere. All over the top, all over the front, all over the sides. This is the definition of a well-loved piece. But beneath the surface, this piece had incredible bones. There were three hidden drawers for extra storage space, meaning this could be used as a dresser or a sideboard. All the drawers dovetailed front and back, showing great craftsmanship. They also had metal gliders. Most mid-century modern pieces have wood-on-wood -wood glides, which don't slide as well as these metal ones. And last but not least, this piece was solid wood through and through. Mom was the artiste this time around and drew what we had discussed as our vision for this piece. If you watch our channel, you know that sometimes we change course as we go and veer away from our original vision. But in this case, we stuck very close to the original design. Creamy white drawers, wooden frame, and dark hardware. Let's get to work. The first step to any flip is disassembling and cleaning. For this piece, we needed to remove all the hardware, unhinge the cabinet doors, remove the drawers, and clean everything with soap and water from top to bottom. We also removed the base, which is the legs and the apron of the piece, to make sanding easier in our next step. We started with an 80 grit sandpaper to remove the black paint and get down to the bare wood. Sanding is usually the longest part of the process, so we tackled this step together by having two sanders working simultaneously. And wow, it was easy to notice the superiority of the Festool sander that I have on the right. Look how much further I'm getting in the same time period. Although more expensive, our Festool sander was worth every penny. Sometimes when removing old paints or varathanes, the finish becomes gummy, and it results in crusty layers on your sandpaper. We used a lot of sandpaper for this job, and as an afterthought, realized we probably should have used stripper first. After a few hours of sanding through the layer of black, we were quite disappointed with what we were left with. The wood was extremely blotchy, and we still couldn't get out the cigarette burns at the front. We knew that this wouldn't work, so we took a chance and sanded past the dark brown veneer. You never know what you'll uncover, but in our case we unveiled this beautiful light wood that we thought was maybe birch. We spent another few hours sanding. And then we hit this middle board. It didn't match and it looked like a patch job, so we didn't even bother wasting our time finishing the sand. What a roller coaster! We took a break from sanding the top to brainstorm a solution and started working on the rest of the piece in the meantime. We sanded the base and the three hidden drawers, as the plan is to stain these to match whatever we decide to do on the top. After doing a light sand on the outside drawers that we'll be painting, we needed to fill their old hardware holes. The holes were pretty big, making it difficult to just add wood filler, so we tried a new technique, fill the holes with wooden toothpicks. We stuffed a bundle of toothpicks in the hole until it was nice and snug, added wood glue to secure, chopped them down to size, and wiped off the excess glue with a wet cloth. Once they dried, we went over them with wood filler and hand sanded with 120 grit sandpaper until smooth. Our next step is to prime and paint. Although our original vision was to stain the sides, given the challenges we were having with the top, we just decided to paint them. We like to tape the inside frame to create a crisp straight line with the paint. This gives it a much cleaner and professional look. 
We also used Beauty Tone Stick It to prime the faces of the six outside drawers. After our primer had dried, we applied our main color, New Cream Cabinet and Furniture Paint by Beauty Tone. We used a small paintbrush to get into the corners and a lint-free roller for the flat areas. Three coats gives us great coverage. We decided on a lighter stain that would look fabulous with the creamy white paint. Our choice? Salmon in the color Antique. This product is a combination stain and polyurethane, so it saves us a step. We started with the three hidden drawers in the middle section, and then the apron and leg base. Once dry, we reattached the base and reinserted all of the drawers. As a finishing touch, we sprayed the tops of the drawers with a polyurethane for added protection. Our solution to fix the top was to cover it with these oak slats that we scored from a local carpenter. The pieces weren't long enough to run the full length of the dresser, so we decided to create two frames and then fill them in a horizontal pattern. We cut the corners of our frame at a 45 degree angle using our miter saw for a more finished look. We chose our slats and laid them out, being selective about their order. We wanted to create a cohesive look, so matched up slats that had similar wood grains and thicknesses. Once we were happy, we numbered them in order and cut them to size. To attach the oak pieces, we used wood glue, then we filled the gaps with tinted wood filler. We squeezed a generous amount of glue on the back of each slat. We then use a brush to spread the glue evenly. We like to use a plastic barbecue basting brush because the cleanup is so easy. We also added glue to the edges of the slats already in place and spread evenly with a gloved finger. We did three rows at a time and clamped them in place until dry. Once we repeated that process for 16 rows, it was time to whip out our sander. To make the top a bit more even, we started with an 80 grit sandpaper and then we hand sanded with a 220 grit for a smooth finish. Although the slats were planed, we focused on the raised edges, making sure we sanded in the direction of the grain. We then wiped the piece clean to get rid of any sawdust. Now it's time to stain. We used the same antique color to match the wood on the inside drawers, the trim, and the base. We finished with two coats of varathane for added protection. We use a paintbrush to spread a thick layer of stain, and then wipe it off with a lint-free cloth. We can see the finish line. Choosing hardware is the last step, but it was pretty difficult. We originally thought that we wanted dark handles, but when we held it up against the dresser, it was too stark of a contrast. So we decided to soften up the darkness with a very light spray of rose gold Rust-Oleum paint. Much nicer. We drilled new hardware holes and fastened the new metal handles and knobs. Ta-da! Like magic, this mid-century piece is fully transformed. The unique wood slat pattern was a happy accident, but the outcome was worth all of those sanding disasters along the way. The hidden drawers matched the top perfectly, and we couldn't be happier with how this piece turned out. Let us know what you think and ask us any questions you have in the comments below. See you, See you next weekend! weekend.